Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. Hi, and welcome back to the Old Testament podcast. This episode will be chapter 19 of Exodus, verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched or encamped in the wilderness, and were and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, like the temple, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew term from which peculiar was translated, which means valued property or treasure. In the New Testament, the Greek term from which peculiar was translated, means possession or an obtaining. Thus we see that the scriptural peculiar, the scriptural term peculiar signifies valued treasure made or selected by God. For us to be identified as the Lord's peculiar treasure is a complement of the highest order. Verse 6, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. One of the prophet's duties is including is to try to prepare us to be worthy of God's presence. Our changing clothes and so on in the temple is to make us ready to see God. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. The mount of God is sacred. There are some things in the temple that are so sacred that they should not be touched except when necessary. Verse 13, There shall be a hand... There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. Hebrews, do not go near any woman, i.e. with lust. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that went or that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the nether part or foot of the mount. And and Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke. In other words, it was covered with smoke everywhere because the Lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up, uh, up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through, to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down upon, unto the people, and spake unto them. The prophet Joseph Smith taught, This is why Adam blessed his posterity in the valley of Adam on Diamon. He wanted to bring them into the presence of God. They looked for a city, and so on, which builder and maker is God. Moses sought to bring the children of Israel into the presence of God through the power of the priesthood, but he could not. 
President Benson said, How did Adam bring his descendants into the, pre- into the presence of the Lord? The answer, Adam and his descendants entered into the priesthood order of God. Today we would say that they went to the house of the Lord and received their blessings. If they had accepted all of the privileges offered them and followed the instructions which would have qualified them to receive the fulfillment of all God's promises, they could have been accorded the grandest of all revelations. He, afford, he offered to, to come down in the sight of all the people and let them hear when he spoke to Moses that they might know for themselves about his will and his law and believe in Moses' future revelations from God and revere the Lord evermore. Now the need of cleanliness and spiritual dedication in their preparation for this great spiritual experience. At the prearranged signal, the sounding of the trumpet exceedingly long, the people trembled in anticipation and awe, but apparently they were not fully ready to come up in the sight of the Lord on the mount where Moses was, for the Lord told him to go down and warn them not to come up. Hints as to why this was so are found in the next chapter, chapter 20. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou unto us, speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. And then in DNC 44, it says, Without the ordinances thereof and the authority of the priesthood, the power of godliness is not manifest unto men in the flesh. For without this, no man can see the face of God, even the Father, and live. Now this Moses plainly taught to the children of Israel in the wilderness and sought diligently to sanctify his people that they might behold the face of God. But they hardened their hearts and could not endure his presence. Therefore, the Lord in his wrath, for his anger was kindled against them, swore that they would they should not enter into his rest while in the wilderness, which rest is the fullness of his glory. Therefore, he took Moses out of the midst of the out of their midst and the holy priesthood also. But even though their hearts were not fully prepared to endure his presence, they did hear the voice and the words of God as the Ten Commandments were given, as will be seen later when we study Moses' review of these great events in in his valedictory in Deuteronomy chapter 4. The presentation of the Ten Commandments on the stone tablets is recounted a little later in the narrative, and a second set of tablets prepared after the first set were broken and are spoken of in Exodus 34. So that's the end of uh, Exodus 19. And next time we'll do section or uh, Exodus 20, which is the Ten Commandments. See you then. Bye.